Hello and welcome to the Awaken Feminine podcast. I'm your host, Kaki Lee, and I'm on a mission to share the love and wisdom of inspiring women from around the world who have gone through adversity and turned their pain into purpose. Today, I'm excited to share the love and wisdom of advanced healer, teacher and coach at the School of the Heart, speaker and founder of the and host of the Uplifting Humans podcast and Kundalini Yoga and Mindfulness instructor, Salindran Bula, who's joining me all the way from Vancouver in Canada. Welcome, Salindran. Thank you for having me, Kaki. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the listeners. Yeah. yeah, I'm so excited to have you on the Awaken Feminine podcast. So before we get started, I always like to ask my guests, um, you know, what is your definition of an awakened feminine? The awakened feminine in uh, the way that I actually relate to it is really bringing your authentic self forward. You know, each of us are free sovereign beings. And as much as we live in communities, families and uh, cultures, um, bringing your authentic self is very, very much needed. And it's, it's, it's very interesting, the time that we're living in, um, you know, and moving through right now, as we speak, um, it's, it's having the ability to communicate what you are intuitively feeling, Mm -hmm. sensing, and know that you need to communicate at any given moment. So as much as you know, you're feeling that you have something to share, something to say, something uh, which is your truth. In actual fact, it is the divine that is actually orchestrating all of that through you, through your divine feminine. Yeah. Well, that's such an awesome definition. Thank you for sharing that. God, I'm getting like tingles. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, so um, can I call you Sal? Yes, 100%. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's dive into your journey. I know, you know, um, that your career was, you know, probably something a bit different before you started in your spirituality journey. Uh, I want to ask you, you know, what really led you down this path to really being this, you know, healer, this teacher, this coach, this, you know, podcaster, speaker, and really you know, embracing that side of yourself and, you know, spreading it across the world, you know, what was that path? What did that path look like for you? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, It's, it's interesting because, you know, people find their path uh, having gone through something which was challenging, uh, which may have been, um, you know, uh, some form of trauma. But in my case, it wasn't any of that. I was actually born uh, in India, yeah. as you can tell from my name, or maybe you can't, but yeah. um, interesting journey. Um, I was born in India, and I remember my earliest, earliest um, internal dialogue at a very young age, and I would say I would probably be about no more than about four, mm-hmm. and I remember standing there in the middle of this tiny home and looking all around and all these adults scurrying around. And what I sensed and picked up as an empathic child is that I don't wanna be here. I wanna go to a place called home, but where is home? And how do I get back there? So that was my first kind of internal dialogue that never left me. And so I spent an uh, incredible amount of time really doing some self-talk, daydreaming as a child. And then what I found is I found myself able to navigate the world, which I found very, very difficult, very harsh, um, and very, very difficult to really be in because I was always overwhelmed with what I was sensing and picking up um, being an empath Mm -hmm. and what I found is that you know there was a place for everything but I always felt out of place and being able to see people's auras and when I were when I when I was able to see people's auras I was able to navigate navigate my journey and I could look at people as a young child and say okay uh, 
I want to be around this person or no, I don't want to be around this person. Yeah. And of course, there was no language at that time for aura or there must have been, but I was too young. Yeah. And I would just look at, you know, that little round circle around all the saints that we know, yes. you know, around their head, yes. that light. Well, I see it. And, and I was probably in about grade five or six when my older sister told me that whoops <laughs> <laughs> when my older sister told me that no you can't see that there's no such thing yeah and don't ever talk about that again and that was it and so now what happened uh after that would have been like I really started to shift and I started to really hone my skills uh, skills for intuition yeah. So I navigated with what felt right, what felt good versus what didn't feel good, what didn't feel right. Mm. And so then the intuition really kicked in because all of a sudden I wasn't relying on just looking at people's auras. And that probably continued right through to high school. And, and then, of course, um, the balance of my journey was really trying to figure out now, how do I take what I know but able to communicate it to others because I didn't know how to communicate you need the right language you need the right tools and skills and of course at that point I ended up really you know delving deep into what are guardian angels what are angels what is yoga what is yeah. um, life after death and really really you know tuned into all of that and what I found is that I my intuition even heightened more yeah. and as my intuition heightened more um, at the time I would have been working at the airlines I was actually able to utilize my skills in many different ways and then I started to understand and comprehend that it wasn't by chance that I ended up you know, uh, with 33 years uh, working at an airline where I would have all sorts of people from all over the planet mm. having interaction with me. Yeah. And, and it was very, very um, surreal because then I started to see beyond what I knew. I started to comprehend that it wasn't me living my life. It was life living through me. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was so it's so beautiful when you get to that point, mm. you know. Wow. And um, yeah. And so one of the things that really helped me build my skills, Kaki, was um, I ended up um, taking one yoga, yoga class, a Kundalini yoga class. Mm. And I fell in love with it. And so I went right next day or on the day, I can't remember. And I signed up to become a yoga teacher mm -hmm. because I knew that would give me the confidence. It would give me the language and it would be able to help me communicate what I know to be my truth, Yeah, which is my journey because it's in our journeys that we're able to help one another. Yeah. Right. And so you know, for the listening audience out there, what you've gone through with, you know, what you felt was a challenge, what you felt was unbearable, but you got through to the other side, well, you have now mastered that. Mm. And there's so many people out there that are looking for people who have mastered something that they are going through right now. Yeah. Yeah. And so your journey and your truth and your story is really a gift to humanity. So how do you share that? Whether you're a coach, whether you're a podcaster, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a mother, yeah. whether, you know, whether you're, you're the cashier at, at, at the grocery store you have the ability to turn someone's life around just by one word and not even a word just by you being you can really really turn someone else's life around yeah
right? And and so that's where a lot of you know a lot of time is spent now is really understanding that. You know, you think that you're walking in the forest or you think you're walking to the park or you're taking your kids to the playground, but it's beyond that. It, you, within your beautiful chemical makeup, which is sound, vibrations, light, mm -hmm. colors, geometries, codes, whatever language you want to use, carry within you something that is needed wherever it is that you travel mm. so sometimes it requires for you to speak and speaking if you take it down one notch is just a bunch of sounds yes it's a bunch of sounds but in the sounds is the vibration the codes the geometries the colors the codes that someone needs to hear, you know, it's kind of like, you, you know, you get mesmerized by someone, you quite, you don't quite remember what they said, mm. but boy, did you feel good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so your journey is a journey as much as you think the journey is about you, as much as you think the journey is for you, the journey is really a journey of everyone. And somehow we're all connecting, we're all pieces of the puzzle. So, you know, you're a podcaster. Yeah. And as a podcaster, you have great responsibility because just you being the podcaster allows for such beautiful work to come forward and all your listeners are able to get something something that resonates with them. They can, sometimes you'll be able to put the finger on it and say, I know what it is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you won't, but that's okay. Yeah. How did you feel about it? Yeah. Right. And, 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 you know, Kaki, we, we are going from a beautiful, you know, a beautiful space of this, of this planet, which is, you know, of the third dimension, we're going into the fifth dimension and the fifth mm. dimension is all about this. It's all about communicating and understanding that you're like walking, you know, satellite, you're, you're communicating constantly. Yeah. Whether you do it verbally or not. Yeah, it is. And it's really just, it, like you're saying, it's your presence. I mean, for me, I'm I'm a I'm a generator, and I know, and I've been going through so many on my journey, connecting with so many spiritual teachers and healers. And it's funny because I never thought of this. People tell they all tell me, "You just being you, like what you say, you do you, and you can change lives." And I'm like how does that even work? But when I actually look back on my journey through my career, it makes so much sense. <laughs> it's, it's funny yes, how, um, yes. you know, you, you never think that just you, your presence can change lives, but it actually can. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, it, it really is. It, it starts with, you know, anything and everything starts with that thought, mm. you know, and then so you kind of working backwards because you know that when you're faced with a challenge, something in your material realm, in this worldly realm has to change yeah. because whatever it is that you're doing physically isn't working. But then you take it a step back and you say, okay, I'm gonna try doing things differently. I'm gonna try saying things differently. And then eventually you start thinking differently and then you start vibrating differently yeah and then you eventually get to the point where oh I just need to be me yes yeah and right. I, I'm still learning to be me <laughs> I'm still on that journey I think you know it's a continuous journey right that yeah. I think before we jumped on it's just forever learning something new about you about the spiritual path whatever it is you're always learning to you know 
be more of you, right? A hundred percent, a hundred percent, you know, um, and again, you know, there's a lot to be said about, you know, people speak about, you know, the latest and the greatest thing is you can create abundance. You can create, <laughs> abu- well, you are abundance. Yes. You are abundance. Just remember that, yeah. you know, you're not creating, you can't be creating something that you're not. Yeah. And so when you come from that place and when you think to yourself, of course, of course, of course, I can be, have, do anything. And when you really start to resonate with that, everything in life starts to flow. Mm. You know, uh, I know for myself, I went from the Kundalini yoga journey, I went into the healing. Mm. And the first form of healing that I learned was to work as a Reiki healer. And I was working at a South Asian um, south asian women's center and so i was just doing you know my selfless service and i mean these women would come in and they have worked themselves to the point where they forgot themselves Mm. i can relate (laughs) you know (laughs) And, and 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 the thing is that you know you think that by you doing all these things that you are, are, are keeping up the house or keeping up the workplace or whatever it is that you feel that you're doing, just remember that all of that doing is no good unless you've actually gone ahead and spent some time being with yourself. Mm. So being comes before the doing. Yeah. And so if you take those, even a few breaths, And really take out, you know, out of your day, at least, you know, half an hour to an hour minimum for yourself. That will serve your family, your community, your workplace and everyone else. Because your vibration, your frequency, your codes, all of that are going to be completely different. Yeah. Because you're taking responsibility of yourself first. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, you know, I went from, from being a, um, a Reiki teacher, really helping some women from a different generation understand the importance of self-love and self-care. Mm. To moving forward through many, many different healing modalities, access consciousness, say keen practitioner, uh, Satnam Rasai, and these are all different energy healing modalities. Yeah. Quantum flow, quantum healing, um, and the list goes on. And uh, it's been a beautiful journey, you know, an absolute beautiful journey. And You know, I don't know about you, but the other thing that I keep hearing from everyone right now that is going through shifts, changes, and um, um, huge upheavals in their life, whether it's financially, whether it's job-related or things, the the, number of people, you know, I want... I want to remind the audience, if you take a look at what you're going through, really understand what you're going through. And I want you to remember that whatever you're going through, the masses are going through it with you. Yeah. You're not alone. There are so many people that their financial world turned upside down, inside out, Mm. that they've had to start all over again, that their you know 30 year old relationship has now started from scratch again with someone new in their life or their children aren't getting along or they're you know and it goes on I, the list goes on but yeah. it just in my journey i have noticed one thing no matter what i'm feeling no matter what i'm going through no matter what i'm understanding i'm not the only one mm-hmm the masses all over the planet in every corner are going through exactly what I'm going through. Yeah. And, and that's a huge aha moment for a lot of people. Mm. 
I think definitely. And I mean, just looking at our world last year and even now this year, it's a, a t- reflection of everything. Everyone is going through the same thing, you know, yes. whether, um, you know, we're all having to stay at home, we're all working through the same things and shifting through the same things. And it's coming back to letting go of all the busyness or the doing and really getting back into the present moment. So, right. yeah, but for some people it's, it's been great. You know, they're like, oh, I can actually have time to do all these things that I've wanted to do and realise that the old, you know, life that they had in all the business was didn't serve them anymore. But then there's mm-hmm. other people who are very resistant and they still haven't come to the present moment, you know, being in the present because they are resisting and refusing to to be on that journey to just being and not doing and and really reflecting on their life. And so then there's all this chaos and drama and frustration, which then is coming out. (laughs) And, you know, you see this bubble of frustration around the world with what's happening. And equally with that frustration is the polar opposite because the universe lasts, you know, and, you know, there's going to be parts of the world which are going to have some tension, whereas the other parts of the world are going to have such peace and harmony. Mm. And with the with that flow of life, you're able to go ahead and you're able to keep moving forward, you know. Yeah. And and when you're looking at something, and I know for me right now, what's the hardest thing I'm going through right now? Just so that the audience feels that they're not alone. They're yeah. not, you know. Um, financial crisis is over. Thank yeah. you very much. I've done that. And, <laughs> and, and we've gone through that nice and smoothly. Um, redefining who we are uh, in relationships, that's kind of happening right now, mm-hmm. just so that everyone's aware that you're not alone. Um, and right now, um, there's deeper, deeper stuff coming up stuff that I had difficulty with for many, many years, one being forgiveness. Mm. Uh, My mentality used to be um, that, you know, forgiveness meant that I was going to approve what happened or, you know, whatever the situation may be as they're right and I was wrong. Yeah. That's, that was, forgiveness was not in my vocabulary. Mm. So that is coming up again to take me even on a deeper journey because it's really allowing for me to come from a place of compassion and understanding in order to forgive. Yeah. And what a beautiful way to see that now. Yeah. And like you say, it's also, it's not about approving what the other person did is understanding And is really moving, allowing yourself to move forward and not still cling on to that dense energy of anger and resentment and whatever you're feeling, right? It's funny that you say that's coming up for you because probably in the last, probably in the last month, for some reason, I keep whatever I'm reading or like little courses that I'm doing, forgiveness is something that keeps coming up. And yes. as, as you're yes. saying, I think we're all going through the same thing um, to be able to forgive all the past wrongs as you, you know, you, whatever you want to call it, that has been, you know, put on to us. But also at the same time, allowing us to reflect on the situation or what happened and seeing what role we played in it as well so that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we can heal from that. Yeah, and it, it makes you come from a place of compassion mm. because only when you come from a place of compassion and understanding are you able to get to the level of forgiveness that is needed. Mm. So there is the forgiveness and forgiveness has many layers, just like health and happiness and well-being and peace and everything in your life has many different levels or layers to it. 
Yeah. All I'm saying is that I don't know where the audience is at right now. Uh, I'm sharing with you what is currently, um, you know, percolating in my system, in yeah. my little, uh, little world. And so I know that everyone's going through that. And um, so whenever, you know, whenever you're walking about and thinking, you know, I'm, I'm having this kind of day. Mm it's okay accept it and see hmm that's interesting yeah you know hmm that's interesting because then you're not judging yourself or judging the situation you're not looking at it with with the narrow vision that we sometimes have mm. you know because when we look at something sometimes we understand it much later oh, that happened because yeah. of this, this, and this. Now it all makes sense. But of course, it's all hindsight. Yes. Right? And, and so I really, really emphasize to the audience that do, do an internal check where you're at and maybe even have a tendency to take stock of it, write down you know, how you're feeling. And one of the points of journaling is to really see where am I at right now? Yeah. And how am I feeling and why am I feeling this? And only through journaling are you able to allow for spirit to come even closer. And as you're doing that, what happens is that you start to really release everything that's within you, but at the same time, you're also getting to know yourself more. Yeah, I love that. And I love journaling. Uh, it's something that I've been doing for, I mean, since I was probably like 12, 11, 12. And I never, I never understood why I loved writing. You know, mm. if I was angry or whatever it was, I'll just write. And I had, you know, little, you know, little lock journals when I was little. And, yes. um, and as I progressed, even, you know, before I went on my journey, I, I was still journal, but I never really understood why I did it until now it was like so profound. And my journaling obviously has evolved over the years, yeah. but it is so true what you're saying that the more you journal, the more you connect with who you are and understanding who, who you are and where you're at. And that's so important because, you know, you 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 might be going around and being frustrated and angry all the time, and you um, until you actually sit down and think about it or write it out, you you might just really be at the surface level of oh yeah because that person made me angry, but when you look deep inside, it's something that's not being aligned with you, and what is it that's not aligned? You know, so it's journaling such a beautiful experience Beautiful. and, and yeah. I find the days that I don't do it I'm totally like the crazy mum <laughs> when I don't do Isn't it that? yeah 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 well you know and again everyone has their way of uh, coping and 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 understanding I mean some people don't like journaling because they feel I have to sit there and write mm. well you know another tip for individuals who don't like journaling is you might want to just get a mini recorder or record on uh, your voice memos on your cell phone. And that will actually allow for you to understand and then go back a month later and, and just take, take a listen, you know, all of a sudden you're going to be, whoa, I felt that. Oh, yeah. that was then I've come a long way now, yeah. but there's so much growth, right? so much growth that happened with journaling. Um, I know for myself, the, 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 the gift that I give myself is, you know, I, I see myself and I think, okay, what in my past is being triggered right now? Mm. I'm one of these ones that questions all the time. <laughs> yeah. So I'm constantly questioning myself. Is that true? Is that really, is that what's happening here? Or is that something from before? Mm -hmm. because if I know me if I'm emotionally triggered those emo emotional triggers were created in the past yeah so if it's something that's triggered in the past I don't need to know what 
I just need to understand that it's from the past. Yeah. The minute that you bring your awareness to it, all of a sudden you relax. You know, you just relax into it. And the other thing is that, you know, you can give it away. There's a lot of stuff that we carry as females. Yeah. You know, you know it and I know it, you know, look at yourself, you know, you're, you've got a career, you're a mom, you're a wife, you're probably a daughter, you're probably <laughs> a sister, you're probably an aunt, you're probably a, you know, 50 different hats on. Yeah. And then, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a huge thing that you're, look at the gift that you are, look at what you're creating, but you know, in reality, you only get in life what you can handle. Mm. So what you can handle. And if you feel like you've got too much going on, you have too much going on, why don't you just release some of that, you know? Some of that worry, some of that stress, some of that tension. Sometimes it's just to say, you know what? I don't need to worry about my siblings right now. I'm going to give it to source to sort out yeah simple simple acts that make a huge difference because all of a sudden it's not something you're taking on yeah you've you've allowed for something bigger than you to come in and take it on for you yeah exactly right? yeah that's beautiful and the thing is even if you like for your example where you're worrying about your sibling you worrying doesn't actually help in any way. <laughs> I know right? it doesn't, but yeah. And, and yet people do it unconsciously because they feel that they're supporting someone. Yes. Well, if you really truly want to support someone, it's like, let's go for a walk in the nature. Mm. Send them some love and light. Yeah. And do a prayer for them. Do something more constructive than worrying with them. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes. Beautiful and, and it's, <laughs> right? And, and, you know, you look at yourself. I mean, I'm a grandmother now, but, oh, you know, wow. when, I was a, <laughs> when I was a mother, I would, wor you know, I would. I would be concerned. Am I, am I doing a good enough job? Is there anything more that I could be doing? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you look at it, children are simple. They just want to be with you. That's it. Yes. They don't um, need things. No, they don't. Right? No. <laughs> I mean, I, I have two younger kids. I mean, my, I don't know how old your grandkids are, but I'm, I'm, I've got a five and a half and a one and a half year old. And yes. really, they don't want to play, get anything unless you're with them. They just want yes. you to be there yeah. and be present with them. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of being on the phone. You know, sometimes because my work yes. involves using social media or whatever a lot. And yes, my yes. daughter will be like, Mommy, put your phone down. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and then she's like, play with me. So yeah. it that's really all they want. Yeah. You know, it, it's a four-letter word. It's called love. Mm -hmm. That's all they need. Yeah. And that's all we need. You know, and it starts with us loving ourselves. And then once that cup is full, it overflows to everyone else. Yeah. You're not, you, you are love. You're not looking for love. Yeah. Right. And so when you're being you, which is love, all of a sudden, all these people, they just kind of gravitate towards you. They don't know why. And they don't care why. Yeah. They just want to be around you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and what happens when it's the opposite, when you're frustrated, angry, <laughs> nobody wants to be yeah. around you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and sometimes it's even people might not look frustrated or angry, but it's that energy uh, yes. that you feel and that's sometimes you go, oh, why don't I want to be around that person? But it's just that energy there. They might not be, they might be hiding their frustration and the anger and everything. But, you know, there, it is, it's really how, what you're saying before, how people make you feel 
is um, what what uh, was it? I'm losing my thoughts. Like, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> but you know, yeah, you know, a simple term, simple, simple, simple term. Your energy introduces you before you enter. Yeah, yeah. Your energy introduces you before you enter. Enter any room, any space, anywhere. And the thing is, you know, if you go back to, you know, sound is vibration and vibration turns into light. Mm -hmm. Light turns into all the colors that we know, which turns into frequency and everything material that we see. Mm -hmm. You are light beings walking around and people pick that up. So choose very carefully, choose very carefully, you know, which way you want to walk. And I'm not saying, you know, discount or forget the, you know, even rage and anger and all of those shadow parts of us serve a purpose. Mm. They really do. And the only way to actually really get to know them is to love them. Yeah. Right. And so when you embrace that part of you and you embrace the positive part of you and you embrace the whole part of you, all of a sudden everything is aligned. Mm -hmm. You come into that space of the heart. Yeah. And when you come into that space of the heart, that's where we need to be, you know? Yeah. And when you're totally aligned, then you're able to communicate, you're able to express, you're able to just be. Yeah. I love that. And like you say, with embracing all the shadow sides, it's, I like to say thank you yes. because they tell you something. They tell you that you're not aligned. Yes. So it's like, oh, thank you, Anger, That's for right. letting me know this wasn't aligned with me. And just really working with that and feeling the emotions and letting it just pass through and exactly. learn whatever you need to learn and keep going because you, exactly. if you once you stop the flow of emotions you also stop the flow of your what you call positive emotions right because you're numbing you're numbing your emotions in general you're not just numbing the anger you're also numbing how you feel happiness or love and all the other good stuff <laughs> exactly exactly i mean if you look at each emotion even the negative emotions you know we're we're speaking of anger Mm. Anger has a different energy than, for instance, depression or sadness. Mm. Depression or sadness, for many, they don't have the courage or the energy to move forward. Yeah. They are stuck. Whereas anger is an energy field which has some power to it, some gusto to it. And it's like, I'm going to kick through this mm. you see so when you look at the different levels of emotions anger is very close to getting into that balancing point yeah right and so you know the the, the key is look at every emotion and just appreciate what it's teaching you yeah it is teaching you something it's a part of you and it exists because we have balance in the universe. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Oh, I'm just loving our conversation, Sal. <laughs> I want to, uh, yeah. you know, you to yeah. share more love and wisdom of, with us, of course. I yes. want to dive in a little bit more on your personal journey. So yes. was there a particular experience in your life that was really, really the most challenging but actually led you to your biggest breakthrough? Uh, let me, yeah, okay. The most challenging would be that we have beautiful relationships that we're in, mm -hmm. intimate relationships that we're in. And like I said, that we have, we have balance, balance within us, balance within our homes, balance within our communities and the world and beyond into the universe. Well, there's also this balance that exists with between a male and a female in a relationship. Yeah. So my one of the uh, the most challenging would have been if I am so on the path 
not saying that no one else sits. Everyone's mm. on the path wherever they're at. Yes. But if I've gone here, the balancing of my relationship would require that either we're going to both be doing this yes. or it's going to become kind of like this, mm. right? It's like the pendulum. Yes. And so what happened for me is that as I went further on this journey and this journey that everyone is going to be on at a much deeper level, questioning who am I and why am I here, mm. doesn't necessarily mean that my other half is going to be doing the same. Yes. That for me was the biggest challenge. But the beautiful part of that challenge was the more that the more that you know in my relationship you know I had you know everything's good honey why do you have to change why do you have to do this well I don't understand this this is really weird wonky stuff I don't know what it is that you're doing yeah. you see the more that it kind of put fuel under me to say no 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 keep going yeah keep going you 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 have your journey and then you have jointly a journey as well yeah and for me that was the big catalyst because i just had to move i had to move as quickly as possible because it was my time mm -hmm. and it was anger to a certain degree that allowed for that you know rocket ship to take off yes in the direction it needed because if I didn't have that anger to help me and propel me in the right direction that I needed to be in, uh, that was created by my relationship, it would have been very difficult because I would have just moseyed through life. Yeah. Maybe I wouldn't have been able to learn and acquire and move through and understand at the level that I am today. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome and yeah I just want to touch on the relationship and you moving one direction and whether your partner comes to the party or not because that's something I went through at the beginning when I started going through my journey my husband's like why like nothing's wrong everything's great why are you yes. doing this right yes yes, yes and yes. there was that period of frustration and getting angry in the relationship, you know, my, I mean, my husband is cool, calm as anything. So he just, he's just like, okay, you know, whatever. I'm the one going, you know, you, it's, it, I'm like, I'm up here, but he's still down here. And whether, you know, your partner comes to the party makes a big difference. I mean, obviously you went, okay, I, I need to move away. And I, I'm very grateful. My husband decided to go on his journey. So now, you know, we are getting, I mean, closer again yes yeah so it's yes. it's um yeah like you say it's such a beautiful journey you're not just here to walk your path but it's the path for you know your you and your husband or and your whole family because it changes the dynamics of how you interact with your children and everyone else around you as well exactly exactly and so for me I would say that would have been the most challenging and and and, and difficult um obstacle mm. but that gave me the courage that also developed my ability to communicate yeah because i i was a very closed person i was not talkative mm. i was okay i'm angry and i'm just gonna bottle it up yeah. i'm angry i'm gonna bottle it up and then sometimes bottling it up turned into silence for a week yeah and eventually you know all of that changed. So there's a beautiful part and, and there's a reason why we have who we have in our life. And it really is to help us on the journey too. Yeah. Just as much as we're helping them, they're helping us. Yeah. And um, yeah, so, so that, that would have changed, you know, in so many ways 
uh, the world that I live in today. Yeah. And so he, you know, he's able to understand, but mm. unfortunately not to the depth. Yeah. And therein lies fear, mm. right? Um, you know, I once had um, a conversation with Dr. Joe and he's like, you know, um, I had a conversation and um, so-and-so told me and another famous, you know, famous uh, speaker and mm. author. And she told me it's because, you know, they're, the Indian men are very, very uh, overbearing and protective and very culturally oriented. And I said, I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. Mm. I've had experience in that. Yeah. And it's nothing but fear. Yeah. Fear of the unknown, fear of being left behind, fear of what is what is happening here what's what's going to become of me you see yeah. and all that first energy center level stuff starts mm -hmm. to come back up yeah. because you are their rock as a female you are their rock you are their stability you are everything after their mother remember the woman that gave them birth yeah you're the next one in line yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> So now imagine that world shifting and changing and moving. Mm. And it's like, what is going on here? Yeah. And it's fear. It really yeah. truly is fear. And as much as you're able to communicate and help someone else understand, there's only so much they're able to accept. Yeah. There's only so much they're able to believe and understand as a part of them. Mm. So I can speak about yoga and I can I can speak about intuition I can speak about all of this but unless he understands it to the level that I know it to be my truth mm. he's not going to get it yeah yeah right? yeah and then that fear is whether he just goes okay that is Sal and I accept that and I don't understand it but you know I um, fully accept and bless her to do what she's doing and we'll continue the path together or whether that fear takes over and go I can't I, I just can't I this rock my rock is gone I don't understand her and or is and, going yeah. yeah and then that's when the yeah. path splits right because it he's he's not able to like you say accept or understand or even have the openness or willingness to yeah accept it or understand exactly and fear within another individual belongs to them yeah so i'm not in control of that mechanism you are if it was within me then i can control it in whichever way shape or form right yeah all i can do is is be there and reassure you that everything's going to be fine and it's okay that you don't understand everything to the level that I do. Mm. And I'm still here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, right. it's, I guess if for the people that are listening who are, I guess, not on a spiritual path or yet, uh, yes. it's kind of like your, your husband's work or your wife's work. It's like, well, my husband's an engineer and I'm a pharmacist, right? He's not going to be understanding all the drugs and all, you know, the diseases that I know about, right? But he accepts me because I'm a pharmacist and that's my work and that's what I do, right? But at the same time, I don't understand anything about his engineering, you know, building roads and all that kind of stuff. But it's being able to accept that is who they are and go, oh, that's how they are, that's what they do. And yeah, being able to accept them for who they are and what they want to do in their career or in their on their on, on the journey in this case. Yeah. And and you know, when when you're doing something professionally, it's a little bit more accepting mm. because you understand it because it's more defined in this realm. When you're on the spiritual path, unfortunately, it's a little bit more out there and a little bit yeah. more, uh, a little bit more, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You're not, a, it's not tangible. Yes. And so what happens is that uh, depending on 
your heightened ability to see, sense, and feel mm. um, what is going on energetically, um, it really is scary. It's so scary because you don't understand. That's not a part of the normal world. Although now it will be the normal world. Hello, people. Yeah. <laughs> we are the new normal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, you know, there, there is, you know, it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's recognizing and being able to help one another through that. But for my journey, for my journey, for my challenge, it was the fuel that I needed mm. to ignite my path even more. Yeah, that's awesome. So I want to yeah. ask you, Sal, I mean, yeah. going, going through that change in your relationship and moving away from your relationship, what were some of the tools or teachers that were really helpful to help you with your healing process? Because obviously it would have, you know, caused some trauma in some, some sense, right? Yeah, so some of my teachers that I've learned from, is that, I'm sorry, I didn't quite. Oh, yeah, tools or teachers. So what were some things that you did to, you know, help you move through so that you can keep moving towards what you were wanting to do? And Well, for me, um, you know, I'm, I'm a real feeler. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I have the ability to sense. And the way that I've navigated life is, if I'm sensing this feels good, it feels right, it puts a smile on my face, that is the direction that I'm gonna go. Mm. That was a huge thing for me. Um, For the ones that are out there and they're um, wondering, I don't know the mechanism that you're used to, um, whether you want to weigh your pros and cons or whether you're more comfortable with, you know, this is something new that I want to experience. I know though that the masses, you know, Kathy, the masses out there are really, really becoming more aware, Mm. more awake. Yeah. And so it's not by chance that everyone's going through, okay, so how am I going to navigate this next step of my life? This new world that we're stepping into requires us to hone those quips, those skills and to hone the skill of being able to communicate verbally yes. as well as to bring your courage forward. It is about your authentic self. Those things are all needed. And in order for that to happen, um, you have to be able to understand that you as an individual are more than the physical being that you see in the mirror every day. Yeah. And once you understand that you're more than the physical being that you see in the mirror every day, then you are going to go to the point of everything that I am sensing and feeling and behaving and believing is nothing but a bunch of stuff that has been programmed or taught or conditioned in me. So everything that you are is either programmed, conditioned, beliefs instilled. That is a part of who you are. But is that truly who you are? You need to come to a place of questioning your beliefs. Yes. You need to come to a point of questioning your actions, questioning your feelings, questioning your thoughts. Yes. Only then will you realize and go even deeper on the journey. Yes. Because once you question, all of a sudden, your conscious mind becomes aware oh there's a question being asked i better pay attention yeah and you're not running on autopilot yes and so as you start to do this you become more and more aware and awake whether it's through journaling and and monitoring yourself and also you know um, some of the beautiful things you know a takeaway a very easy takeaway is whenever you're emotional know that you're acting out of the past. Yeah. 
whenever you're emotional, you're in the past. You're not in the present mm. because all your emotions were created in the past. Yeah. And something's being triggered and that emotion's being triggered. And now all of a sudden you need to just shine your spotlight on it. What's your spotlight? Bring your awareness and just say, hmm, that's interesting. Why am I feeling that? Yeah. And, and, and really, even when you're questioning, I would say to the audience, step back. You're not angry. Khaki is not angry. Sal is not angry. Mm -hmm. We are feeling anger, but it is not who we are. Yeah, there's a difference. So when you disconnect from whatever it is, all of a sudden you're able to see it outside of it. Yeah. You're no longer that thing, that emotion, that feeling. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know if I've answered your question, but, <laughs> yeah. but these are things, these are tools that I'm using to navigate and I have been using to navigate ever since I was a kid. Yeah. And they I, haven't left me. I just love that you had that thought in your head or, you know, your internal dialogue at four. I'm just like still blown away <laughs> that yeah. you know, I, I want to go home. <laughs> I think if my child said that, I probably would have gone, oh, okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. You know. I just want to go home. And so where is home? I don't know where home is. Yeah. But I know it doesn't feel good here because it's really hard here. Yeah. Everyone's yelling and screaming and so mean to each other. Why would I want to be here? Yeah, that's uh, awesome. But yes, you did answer my question because, you know, <laughs> you just talked. To, it's really being that observe, that neutral observer going, yes. okay, why, what, what is being triggered, like what you're saying, and really un taking that understanding as to what it is that, from your past that is being triggered and what you need to heal really it brings up what what trauma or something that's underlying that you have not dealt with right that's right yeah and there's many layers to that yes and just remember that there's many layers to that but that was all for you hmm. it was all for you to be who you are today yeah right yes and and it's all good everything that happens is all for your betterment it's for humanity you know um i can't remember uh um the 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 vietnamese monk what was his name oh, yeah Th not yeah Chin, is yeah it? i think so yeah. I, I, I know who you're talking about i can't yeah, remember yeah <laughs> yeah you know it's like wherever you go you know know that that's you you know wherever yeah. you go whoever it is that is you, the tree is you, the dog is you, the house is you, the car is you, the people that you're interacting with is you. Yeah. So whatever it is as a mirror reflection that's reflecting back at you requires your love, requires your attention, requires your compassion, requires your gratitude, Yeah. requires for you to be you. Yeah. And, um, just when it when you heal the trauma or the parts of yourself that need healing you're actually not just healing yourself you're healing you know everyone that's right your yeah. lineage seven generations uh forward and eight generations back mm -hmm. you're you're healing not just yourself sometimes you're healing the planet mm -hmm. well i mean you are healing the planet but you're healing beyond yourself yeah. You may be physically feeling, you know, uh, the emotions and sensing um, as a whole what the environment is going through. Mm. And what, what, it, what, what is happening is that energies are flowing through you because you have the capability of handling that. And what you're doing is you're grounding that into Mother Earth to recycle. And when you do that and you're grounding those energies, I mean you're doing the work of the many. Yeah. You know, you don't need to, you don't need to see it. You don't need to understand it. Just remember that, you know, you are here. And as long as you keep life simple and live by simple principles with a big open heart, 
And whenever you come from that place of heart, know that you're doing the right thing. Yeah. And don't be that self-critic because, you know, I think we judge ourselves. We're the biggest critic in our life is us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. You know, especially (laughs) as women, especially as women, right? Yeah. Yeah. What more can I do? What more can I do? What more can I do? And by the end of the night, you're like half broken going to bed, right? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes definitely um right yeah for I think with especially I found I mean like in the last year I've met with so many beautiful women talking you know empowering and rising up right and yes. because we're doing all the healing work you're finding that there's more and more women rising up because they see other women rising up so it's like it's this beautiful vortex that you're creating this community because you're not just when you're healed as we're saying you're not just healing yourself it it helps other women to rise up and to heal as well so and for women yes we we just love criticizing ourselves and not thinking that we're enough or doing enough or being enough but that's all part of the conditioning that we've had for thousands of years right because we've been suppressed we've been told that you know you you just need to look after the kids and that's all that's that's your job and that's it you know you're not there to do anything greater that's a very very disempowering um we're leaving you know if i may um khaki Mm. we're leaving an era where the masculine the divine masculine was was kind of at the helm of things and the divine masculine, if you look at the ancient, you know, mystic schools of India, it's the Shiva, mm-hmm. the Shiva and the Shakti, the divine masculine and the divine feminine. And there has to be, there has to be thousands of years of each of these forces that mm-hmm. are, are living through us. And so as we lit, as we leave this very uh, divine masculine energy, which is from the mind, mm-hmm because everything was created um, analytically, um, you know, the bigger the house, the bigger the car, the bigger the title, the bigger the job, the bit, you know, and Mm. not discounting that was needed in some way or form Mm. to make the strides of evolution that we did. Now we're in stepping into the fifth dimension, which is all about the divine feminine, the divine feminine, which is the Shakti, which is all about the heart. Yeah. So you have the male and the female, okay? Yeah. And within every male and female as a, in human form, half our body is male and half our body is female. So male and female, just like a car battery, we have to have that equilibrium, yeah. okay? And only now are we now saying, think with the heart, speak with the heart, Feel mm. with the heart. Do everything with the heart. Yeah. There's a reason. We are now in well into the into the Aquarian age, five dimensional divine feminine realm of doing being on this planet. And this is going to require each of us, male or female, to really bring in who we truly are from that divine from female perspective. Mm-hmm. You have no idea how many friends I have. Like I have, I'll give you an example. I have a wonderful friend. He's a shaman. He was a, an engineer, civil engineer. I don't know for which state, um, one of the top guys. And so he was analytical. So he's very, mm-hmm. very you know, much as, uh, as an engineer, but he was a shaman by heart. And only recently he said, I don't know what to do with all these emotions and things that I keep having to deal with. And I <laughs> and I thought it was just beautiful because that's the divine female coming into him yeah. and balancing his analytical side for yeah. his divine masculine. Yeah. So ladies, if you're out there listening to this, if, if you, the males in your life are in a bit of a emotional roller coaster (laughs) please help them yes please help them because now they're starting to really sense and feel and come from that nurturing instinct of (laughs) 
of the divine feminine side of things. Yeah. I love and, that. and, you know, it was so beautiful because, you know, as much as I know this is for, for women, but because it's women, we have to, we, we do have to look at the divine feminine as a part of every male and female. Yeah. I think, yeah, we've, as women, we've been, you know, the masculine side of us has been very strong. I mean, I can speak for myself, definitely is very is I've always been very logical you know very science-based you know everything has to be and I have to do 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 but since I've been on my journey it's like okay right navigating the other side is like whoa okay <laughs> but it's yeah. beautiful when you can get that balance because that's when every the magic happens and everything flows and you know that's it, right yeah and, 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 you know, just like you said, you were empowered by whoever raised you and brought you into the world of sciences and made you very analytical and whatever that journey was. And looking at that and embracing that, but now you're going to embrace the divine feminine aspects of who you are. And so even in, 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 in relationships, male and female, if you see one as more female and one is more masculine and they will keep reversing roles all the time. Mm. So the, the female who has traits of more of the masculine, the divine masculine, all of a sudden you'll see the male becoming more divine feminine and it, and it'll bounce the other way and then it'll bounce the other way. Yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah, I love it. So, so I want to ask you, um, you know, we, you did mention self-love before because I'm all about self-love because that was such a big thing on my journey. So yeah. can you share with us what does, you know, as an awakened feminine, what does self-love actually mean to you? Yes. Well, what does self-love mean to me? Self-love means to me embracing all that I am accepting all that I am and loving all that I am. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And I want to ask you, what are your top three go-to activities to make sure that you give yourself the self-love that you deserve? Meditation, number one for me. Mm. Number one, number one. Number two is making sure that I go for a walk in nature Mm. because then I connect back to myself yeah and number three is just having me time beautiful doing whatever it is that I love to do yeah love that thank you for sharing those with us thank you and yeah. I want to ask you if you could go back to say a younger version of yourself what is a piece of advice that you would love to give yourself knowing everything that you know now Wow, that's a big one. <laughs> and by the way, I did find home. Yeah. Home is right here. Yes. Um, a younger version of me and what advice would I give them now? I would say that I would go back and I would tell my younger self, it's going to be okay. Yeah. I love that. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Actually, matter of fact, it's going to be more than okay. It's going to be a fantastic ride. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. Full body tingles with that one. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a fantastic ride. I mean, yeah. I have no regrets. Yeah. I have no regrets. And I think that's a great piece of advice for now as well, right? It's reminding ourselves that it's a journey. It's a, you know, really amazing journey, but we just need to allow and surrender to it and not try to control and, everything. <laughs> and judge, you know, I yeah. mean, gosh, you know, I, the reason I think it came out as that everything's going to be okay is because I went back to really being young because that is a, me in my younger state would have said it's going to be okay but me as my adult version no it's going to be a fantastic ride yeah. you're gonna love this just yeah. wait till you see you know 
what you're going to be able to do and achieve and learn and grow and help. Yeah. Because everyone has that same beautiful hidden desire. Yeah. I love that. Right. Yes. So Sal, thank you so much for sharing your love and wisdom with us today. I've really enjoyed our conversation, such, you know, deep, meaningful conversation. I just love, you know, your journey you know, you. having being someone that has had this longing for home and finding it in the end that is within you, that's just such a beautiful, beautiful journey. And so I want to ask you if people want to work with you or they want to find out more about you, where should they go? Thank you. Thank you for that. And um, yes, uh, I do uh, healing and I do coaching and I uh, actually teach. Um, and I also do podcasting. Yeah. Um, so currently my website is upliftinghumans.com. That's upliftinghumans with the S.com. And you can find me on Facebook as well. And of course, and my new website, which should be up and running next month, which will actually have uh, beautiful opportunities for people to learn and to grow together. Uh, and that will, uh, the website will be soulpurposefreedom.com. And, uh, and apart from that, I can give you my email, which is sal.buller at gmail.com. I look forward to anyone who reaches out to me. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. I'll have all your details in the show notes so people can reach out to you. Thank you so much once again. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy, for this uh, wonderful opportunity. Thank you. And until next time, I love you. I believe in you and you are worth taking that step to the life of your dreams.